The clock has run out on 2009, but a few Bethel Royals have already found a way to beat the buzzer early in 2010. Yeah! Yeah! Nye gives to Gilpin. Back out front for Nye. Long three-pointer. Oh, my goodness. That was an NBA three-pointer. Frazee puts it through his legs. Up and right at him. Welcome to the first edition of Royal Recap for the new year. I'm Sports Information Director Dale Eng, bringing you highlights from the last week of Bethel University Athletics. It's been a full month since the men's hockey team last took to the ice, and the last time they did, the Royals defeated the Concordia Cobbers 2-1 thanks to an overtime goal by Mason Swenson. Remember that little factoid as we go through highlights of the Royals taking on the Northland College Lumberjacks for their first game of 2010. The Royals found themselves trailing 2 to nothing until the midway point of the second period. That's when Chris Fiala helped Bethel get on the scoreboard during a power play with his sixth goal of the season. But by the end of the period, the Lumberjacks had gone back ahead by two. Fiala scored his second goal of the game three and a half minutes into the third period, once again on a power play, only to have Northland answer back three minutes later to take a 4-2 to two lead. Down, but certainly not out, the Royals climbed back within one as Jack Paul scored his third goal of the season. And less than four minutes later, Bethel tied the game with seven minutes remaining, thanks to Jake Kalaja's sixth goal of the season. That set the stage for overtime, and in Bethel's two previous overtime games this season, they've won by way of a Mason Swenson goal, assisted by John Krause. So with 5.9 seconds remaining in the extra period, what do you think is going to happen here? In case you missed it, here's Jake Cogler kicking the faceoff out to John Kraus. Pass to Swenson. Overtime goal for Bethel with just 2.2 seconds remaining, giving Bethel its first win of the new year. That was Swenson's third goal of the season, and all three of them up to that point had been overtime game winners. Now let's go to Tuesday night's game against Northland, where we see Swenson score his first non-overtime goal to give Bethel a 1-0 lead eight minutes into the first period. The lead didn't last long, though, as the Lumberjacks scored twice before the period was over, making it 2-1 in their favor. In the second period, Bethel came out with guns blazing. Blake Jenkins scored his first collegiate goal to tie the game with the help of Christian Fogarty and Jack Paul. Remember those last two names because they both combined to score Bethel's next two goals. Here's Jack Paul giving Bethel a 3-2 lead with an assist going to Fogarty and also Kraus. Scores! Goal! Jack Paul, number 12. And now here's Paul scoring what would prove to be the game winner with his fifth goal of the season, again assisted by Fogarty and also Zach McGough. Northland trimmed Bethel's lead back down to one shortly after Paul's second goal, but Jake Cogler gave Bethel some insurance with this goal, assisted by Chris Fiala and Jack Paul. Northland pulled their goalie with just over two minutes to go, and Bethel took advantage of the gamble as Chaz Gerrard scored his first collegiate goal to cap off a 6-3 win. Bethel is now 6-7 on the season and has another pair of non-conference home games this weekend. Friday night, the UW Superior Yellow Jackets come to visit, followed by St. Scholastica on Saturday night. Both games start at 7 at the Schwann Super Rink. In women's basketball, last Saturday, the Concordia Cobbers paid a visit to the Robertson Center. Bethel trailed by as many as seven points in the first half before Christy Nye trimmed the Royals' deficit with this three-pointer. Nye then pulled Bethel within one point as she was followed on the way to the bucket and made the free throw for a three-point play. With under a minute to go in the first half, Shanna Greatek gave the Royals their first lead since early in the game with a pair of free throws, and then Nye pushed that lead out to four with a three-pointer as time expired in the first half. Long three-pointer, oh my goodness! That was an NBA three-pointer! In the second half, Bethel built a seven-point lead thanks to a three-point play here from Kristen Walters on a layup and free throw. But Concordia came back, and the two teams played a back-and-forth battle that saw the Cobbers take a 60-57 to lead with just 15 seconds to play. Desperate for points, Rachel Gilbert's three-point attempt with five seconds left was blocked, but Shannon Greatek went in for the bucket and was followed on the way. She made the free throw, sending us into overtime. Once again, the two teams played tug-of-war, and once again, Bethel found a way to extend the game as Gilbert made this layup to tie the game at 68 apiece in the final seconds of the first overtime. Unfortunately, it was in the second overtime that the Cobbers began to pull away. Bethel took a quick lead at 70 to 68 before Concordia came back to tie the game for the 14th time and then went ahead by four points shortly thereafter to stay. The Cobbers defeated Bethel in two overtimes, 79 to 75. A lesser team might have been overly discouraged with a double overtime loss but the Royals bounced back to defeat Hamlin 85-74 the following Monday. 
However, they first needed to find that resiliency that helped take them to a second overtime against a good Concordia team. Bethel trailed by as many as 16 late in the first half before the game slowly turned around. Here, Kristen Walters buries a three-pointer to help Bethel get within two points. The Royals trailed by four at the half, but tied the game a minute and a half into the second thanks to this jumper by Walters, who then also helped Bethel take its first lead of the game with a jumper and free throw to follow. From that point, the Royals managed to cling to a small lead for much of the remainder of the game, finally taking an 11-point lead thanks to this steal by Taylor Sheely and bucket by Shanna Graytech. Graytech would finish with 16 points and 10 rebounds for her first collegiate double-double, while Scotty Motes also posted a double-double with 15 points and 12 rebounds. The Royals are now 2-7 heading into their games on Wednesday and Saturday against St. Thomas and St. Olaf. Finally, in men's basketball, Bethel took on Concordia last Saturday and overcame a 10-point deficit in the first half to tie the game at 33 just before the end of the half with this jumper by Taylor Hall as time expired. Unfortunately, Bethel's momentum stopped there. The Royals made just one basket in the first eight and a half minutes of the second half and was never able to fully recover in a 68-53 loss. Then on Monday, Bethel took on the Hamlin Pipers and put on a good display for the first 20 minutes, taking an eight-point lead into the locker room with buckets like this, a three-pointer from Eric Hugoson, and another three-pointer here, but Bethel slowly saw its lead vanish, and the Pipers led by as many as nine before the Royals staged a comeback that pulled them within two with this three-pointer by Taylor Hall. Unfortunately, there would be no last-second heroics in this game, and the Royals fell by a score of 72 to 70. Hall led all scorers with 19 points. Bethel is now 5-5 five five overall, going into St. Thomas on Wednesday, and then St. Olaf on Saturday. That's it for this week's edition of Royal Recap. I'll be back next week for more men's hockey and men's and women's basketball highlights. Thanks for joining me. I'm Sports Information Director Dale Eng.